As a woodworker and entrepreneur, I'm always interested in more ways to vertically integrate my business. In this video, I'm investigating kilns for drying raw wood and turning it into valuable finished lumber. We've all seen how fast lumber prices can change and far too often I have seen really nice hardwood logs chopped up for firewood. I recently made another floating bed and I've been getting a lot of requests for these and each one uses a live edge headboard. This project was sponsored by iDry, a company that makes kilns for drying lumber, and I took a tour of one of my favorite local lumber businesses to see how they use these iDry kilns. This trip really opened my eyes about the potential of being more vertically integrated, and seeing how easy the kiln was to operate made me actually think that maybe I don't just need to buy wood, maybe I can produce it. So we're here at AE Wood Products, checking out their whole operation, picking up some slabs. But first, let's check out how they dry their wood. I love being in a wood yard, surrounded by slabs. So many projects. So over here we have the eye dry. It's like opening a submarine. So this is some walnut they've had in there. And generally they're about 30 days per load of wood to completely get it down to right around 7% humidity. It's all computer controlled, super precise. And as you can see, man, look at how thick these walls are. This is not just a shipping container with a dehumidifier. This is very substantial. And that's because they actually allows them to get a vacuum inside this kiln. And you can see this is not just, you know, thin one layer of steel. This is like fully built out so you can really like suck the air out of it and uh, the whole unit will maintain its structural integrity. You can also see like the weather sealing around here too. This isn't just some cheap rubber. I mean, this is like a real solid piece of, I don't know if that's silicone or rubber or what that is, but that's substantial. Like no give on the doors. And it's basically like the world's biggest oven. And then these pull over and then you can tighten it down. I imagine this machine's more expensive than the one over there, but what kind of value does this give to a uh, you know, wood business like you guys? More precise drying. More precise. So and temperature control. If we have high dollar wood like the walnut mm -hmm. and it's gonna rain for a week straight, everything's gonna wanna get back to 100% humidity. Right. This will keep it at 5%. So what is the sort of maintenance and upkeep for a system like the iDry? Simple. The yeah. computer does almost everything. Just keep it loaded and keep it plugged in and... Yes. We, we take a picture of this every morning and send it to the boss. And he can monitor it from his phone. There is an app, yes. And we have Wi-Fi set up here. So literally, if you had some trees and access to logs, some sort of basic mill and one of these is all you'd really need to get started on a wood business, right? So this could let you harvest and sell the same wood in the same season. And the quality is just gonna be a lot more predictable too. Yes. I mean, we use a lot of CNC's in our, in our stuff, but uh, for a lot of our friends who do more slab work, they have basically, it's a CNC that all it does is plane things down. And that's nice because it's automated. This yeah. one is a little remote control. That's and that's real clean, perfectly flat. So this is a giant oak cookie that came from that tree that fell on the golf course. Yes. And you're turning this into... A resin table. And so this was dried into eye dry as well? Yes. Oh, wow. Look at these. That's real nice. 1200 bucks. That's fantastic. Look at these. These are like 2,500, not too bad. It's a full three and a quarter inches thick, sugar pine. That's fun, that's like a one piece table. So we got some really cool slabs. This is black oak, very rough. Got some cool holes in it, still has the bark on. I like these cedar slabs a lot. Cedar for me is one of my favorite woods because it's in, well, it's a soft wood, but it's not like a pine soft wood. The grain here is like nice and tight. It's not that kind of big spread out grain like pine. $1,200, very reasonable. Got some cool things happening in the middle here. This would be a fantastic headboard piece. This really tripped me out. This is live oak. And look at the grain and color on this. Super smooth, real tight, dense. 
and it's a thin slab, but for $500, you're getting a lot of surface area. Over this, this is Sequoia, that kind of pinkishness. Not my favorite color, but certainly a nice beefy slab. This is where I think it actually has a lot of value for a headboard project is grafted walnut, $2,200, so definitely pricey, but I mean, this is a big piece of walnut and you could do your river table here without even having to cut the two pieces and flip them over. This I really like. This is oak and 1800 bucks, a full two inches thick. It's got this interesting sort of canyon in it and wow, like just a lot going on. Um, you definitely have a little bit of like softer kind of stuff in here that you'd have to deal with. So again, you're probably looking at some sort of epoxy, but very, very cool. So they also sell completely finished tabletops that are already clear coated. This is walnut, gorgeous. Oh no, kind of drawn to these really clean pine slabs though. Like that table in the front is just perfect, I think. Now this type of investment with a kiln and a sawmill would be a pretty serious one. So I'm definitely interested in doing more research, but here's what I discovered so far. Now these kilns start at about $60,000, which makes it a really serious investment, particularly for a small business. And if you factor in sawmill and the other kind of log handling equipment that you would need, trailers, stuff like that, at the very least I'd be spending about $80,000. So I'm starting to do a little bit of napkin math and here's how I'm starting to think about this issue. I'm currently building out my new compound, which will have room for one of these kilns. I get consistent interest for large slab tables and these floating beds with slab headboards. I typically spend about $400 to $1,200 on slabs. These slabs are the biggest cost component of each one of these projects. If I could source material for less, it would be a very big competitive advantage when it came to pricing these. Now, just because I have a kiln doesn't mean I have access to logs. Typically, I get access to fallen trees from friends about two to three times a year. And if I put the word out and offered removal as a service, I think I could move that up quite a bit. In order to get the investment to pay for itself, I would need to generate about 160 slabs. If you take a look at the capacity for each one of these kilns, you would have no problem producing this amount of slabs relatively quickly. So I'm sure I'm missing some cost and considerations, but feel free to let me know in the comments. This is a, a learning video, not a telling video. For me in general, I like researching business infrastructure investments well in advance of the need because equipment purchases like this can be part of a really effective tax strategy where you put your, you see how much money you're making and if you're a little bit higher than normal, you might as well do some infrastructural investments to try to offset that. So my two main takeaways are, if you get a kiln, you can draw your own lumber to sell. If I was an arborist, owned property with a lot of trees, or wanted to vertically integrate my woodworking business more, I would strongly consider this. Now, if you aren't ready to make this type of large investment into your wood business, you can dry wood with iDry as a service. So they have a network of these kilns around the country, and you can actually rent space in them. Check out the website, it gives you a little bit more information about this. So I think this might be my next step. My parents have a massive walnut stump in their backyard and I think I could probably get about 15 to 20 cookies, about three to four feet in diameter. And that one big stump isn't enough to justify the cost on its own, but it certainly is worth sort of testing out the service. If I like that, then maybe we'll see from there. Vacuum drying technology used to be out of reach financially for most woodworking businesses, but iDry is showing that it is as competitive as other drying solutions for the value and control that you're getting. So if you have knowledge about this industry, I would really love to hear your comments. I wanna know the pros and cons of, of trying to vertically integrate. I'm sure I'm not thinking about all the kind of little hassles and labor things and time consuming and additional costs that, that go into the kind of complex behavior, but um, I know a lot of you out there have a ton of this experience. So please share your experiences. We'll all benefit from them in the comments and thanks for watching. Oh, and also if you wanna see a little bit more about the bed build that I did, uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description. Thanks, bye.